All right, guys, in this video, we are going to be prepping the block for assembly. So we're going to chase all the threaded holes to clean out all the dirt and debris. We're going to tune up the gasket surfaces by scraping them. And then on the decks, we will be sanding them to check for flatness, to just see how they turn out and just to uh, tune them up a little bit. And then we'll just wheel it outside and give it a good bath and then make sure all the oil passages are clean. All right, guys, also some exciting news I want to share with you. Summit Racing will be sponsoring this video and a few other upcoming videos on helping me build up this uh, engine or at least in short block form. So at least the next couple videos, I'm going to get some assistance, which is super helpful. Okay, one thing we're going to be using in this video that they sent is a clean out tap. It's an M11 by 2.0 pitch thread. And this basically you run in and out of the thread holes for all the head bolts and it cleans out the threads. So that way when we go to install the heads and torque the fasteners, we're going to get good torque readings. All right, so this is ARP part number 912-0011, and I'll put the Summit Racing part number down here. All right, guys, so a couple notes about Summit Racing. I've used them 20 years ago when I first owned my first Chevelle, and that thing needed a bunch of work, so I ordered from them back in the 90s, and here I am working on this project. They are an excellent vendor to use for all your parts. Also, I don't know if you know this or not, but they actually have a motorcycle section. So check that out. They may have the parts and equipment and all that stuff you need for your project. Just a year or two ago, I bought a Rage Carrier for my KX250 from them. They actually had the best pricing and free shipping for that item. So make sure to check out Summit Racing. I'll leave a link in the upper right and a huge thanks to them for supporting this channel. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is use this super scraper gasket scraper. Love this thing. It was like $40, but it has a really sharp carbide tip on here. So you just want to keep it flat on the surface and go ahead and just scrape all the old junk off, okay? Alright, so that's looking a lot better already. Okay, next thing we're going to do is I have a flat aluminum plate. And what this is, is precision machine cast aluminum plate, usually used by tool rooms to make fixtures and whatnot. So I got this scrap piece from somewhere. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some sandpaper on here. I have 220 grit PSA uh, sandpaper that you use for like body work and whatnot. And I'll try to lay two strips on here. All right, so just keep it nice and flat. All right guys, so I know some people are probably gonna freak out on the sanding of the deck. Now, I watched a video from Power Nation. They did pretty much the same thing, except they used 180 grit. Okay, so if you look at the surface finish that MLS head gaskets need, it's usually in the 180 to 220 grit range. And you can Google search that and, and read till you're blue in the face on what kind of surface finish is required for certain MLS gaskets. But in any case, um, as long as you use a long piece that is flat and just use light strokes, light pressure, I think you'll be just fine. Certainly don't take Rolock discs or scotch Brite discs on a dying grinder and just buzz away, especially on aluminum. That's gonna cause divots and uneven surfaces.
Now with the oil pan, timing cover, back cover, I am just simply going over it with a scraper. There's no need to sand this. Just get the bulk of this off and we'll clean it off and that's it. Okay, so all the gaskets are clean. Let's hit this with a little brake clean and see what we get. I just bought one of these. Freaking awesome. Obviously, I'm going to totally clean this uh, whole block with hot soapy water, but I just want to get a good look at everything here. Yeah, so these surfaces look nice. Um, there is a little bit of marks, if you will, but I can't even hit it with my fingernail. And everything is clean and smooth, so I think it'll seal up just fine. Okay, now what we're going to do is run this metric rethreader. This is like a thread restorer kit. And I'm just going to run it through all the holes in the block to clean the threads. Okay, so this is different than tap because all it has is some straight cuts in here and you run this in and out of the screw holes and you can see how dirty this is and it just grabs all the junk out grease dirt and like dried up loctite okay so obviously i'm going to wash this block with soapy water and get it all clean and whatnot so you're going to want to do this procedure prior so it loosens all the stuff up you can blow it out wash it out and that way you get uh, accurate torque readings during reassembly. So I'll drop a link for this product in the video description below. Okay, so these cam plate bolts definitely have some Loctite in there. I mean, look at this one. This one's really, really crusty in there. So what you can do is blow it out first. And then this just happens to be an M8 by 125. And what you want to do is start it by hand. And then I use my impact on the lowest speed. Okay, so just nice and slow. And this is a blind hole, so you don't want to wrap it in there. Okay. So that guy's perfectly clean. And then after uh, you run it through, it's going to have all this debris on there. So you're going to want to just take your air and blow it out and then run it in the next hole. That one came out pretty clean. There you go. So it just has a bunch of junk on there. All right, so just go through everything and, you know, clean all the holes. Okay, so I wheeled the engine outside. You can see I'm just hitting it with some degreaser I had laying around in the garage. Next up, scrubbing the cylinder walls. You know, we honed the cylinder, so I'm just trying to loosen up all the debris and oil from the honing process. Next, just rinsing it off with garden hose water. And lastly, doing a final wash down rinse with water treated with Hold Tight 102, which is an anti-flash rust product. So, Simply wash it down and then it should protect it from flash rusting. And finally, I have my shop vac here in blow mode. And so instead of, you know, you hook up the hose to the exhaust and just blow off as much water as possible so it dries even quicker. Okay, so it's been two days after I washed this engine block with soapy water and then rinsed it down with the Hold Tight 102 solution. There is no flash rust on these gasket mating surfaces, and especially in the bores because we hone them, right? So that's bare metal, and they are completely rust-free, which is awesome, so I don't have to deal with that. Now, one spot flash rust did appear is right here out of these coolant passages, and I think what happened was there was still some residual water in the water jackets, and it was oozing out. So it washed away the whole tight 102 solution. Uh, in any case, this is the only flash rust I see on the whole block. 
So all I have to do is, you know, I could easily take care of that. Um, this brown stuff here is just still, <laughs> you know, oily stuff that baked on there over the years, but I'm not worried about that. Okay, I would have liked to done this step earlier before um, I washed the block. However, I didn't get this in time. So anyway, here I am. I'm going to have this, I have this vertical, so anytime stuff comes out, it'll just fall out, right, versus falling into the motor. So anyway, I got this thing t uh, chucked up in my tap handle, and you can put a bar through here and do this manually, or it has a 3 8 drive, and I will use my impact on super low speed, okay? Now, it's always a good idea to uh, start this manually by hand. And real quick, let me, let me show you what this thing does. So it has flutes. It has a really straight edge here, and basically it's going to cut all the dirt and debris out of there, okay? It's not going to damage the threads or anything. This just kind of just chases all the threads. Okay, so here we go. So I'm doing low speed. So you can see it has rust and junk and dirt on there, okay? So go ahead and blow that out with air. So there's some crusty stuff coming out of that one. Oh yeah, a couple chunks on that one. Okay, same thing on this side. Just run the tap all the way, the chaser through all these. All right, well, this tool worked great. It cleaned out a bunch of junk out of the tapped holes, and you know, we're gonna get a better, we're gonna get more accurate torque readings and better clamping overall since the threads are clean now, right? Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send some two brushes through all the oil galleys. So there are two here for the lifters, and there's one, you know, here all, all along the side that goes from the oil pump to the oil filter, so, and the barbell in the back. So we'll run a two brush through all of that. Okay, now these two brushes are really short, so what I did here is I just kind of attached the safety wire to it, and I'll just yank it through. First, we'll squirt a little brake clean in there. And we'll go from front to back. Okay, so a lot of brake clean, a lot of air, and just running this brush through here a few times. All right, so looking through there with the flashlight, they look really clean, and if I you know, put my finger in there, the surfaces appear to be very clean. So that takes care of those right there. Okay, the next one is where the barbell goes, and this runs along the length of the block and goes from the oil pump to the oil filter. All right, I'm not gonna be able to get to the other side, but I'll just try to jam this in as far as it'll go. All right, next up, the mains get fed from the lifter holes. So right here is the, 
uh, passage in the block. So I'll just go ahead and we'll clean those out. So I doused this whole area with Bray Clean, let it soak, and then just blue dry everything. Uh, so everything's, you know, really clean. I mean, it doesn't look clean, but you know, all the all the oil and all the junk is definitely gone. Last thing I'm going to do is clean the cylinder walls. So what I have here is these blue shop towels. They seem to to lint the least. Okay. So so far we honed these and we just washed it with soapy water, right? So there's gonna be some grit in here from the honing process. So I'll just take a little bit of brake clean. So I'll put some gloves on, a little bit of brake clean on here, and just wipe the cylinder walls. So you can see all that dirt. That is just honing debris, okay? So it's coming cleaner, but I usually keep going until, until it comes clean. And then another thing I like to do is take transmission fluid and keep wiping it. Transmission fluid uh, has a bunch of detergents in it and it pulls the dirt out and then also lubricates the walls for assembly. All right. So obviously there's still a little bit of dirt. The rest I will get with transmission fluid. But let's just move to the next one. definitely want to get these really clean. Look at all that dirt. Okay, now I'm going to wipe down the cylinder walls with transmission fluid. And it goes from red to brown if it's dirty. And once it comes out red, it is clean. So we'll just do a wipe down with this stuff. So it's looking pretty clean. I guess the brake clean did a good job. Let's let's put a little more on here. All right, that's looking pretty clean to me. So we'll just do that to all eight of them, and. Uh, Move on to the next step. Okay, after you hit all the cylinders with transmission fluid, I take I like to take a little bit of WD-40 and just kind of wipe all the metal surfaces because you know it's going to be a week or two before we fully assemble this, and this will just kind of protect the bare metal from anything that happening. All right, so just go around and hit all your gasket surfaces with that. Okay, once your block is fully clean, just put a garbage bag over it. I mean, they sell fancy engine bags, but this is just a heavy duty contractor bag. And I just like to keep my engine like that to keep all the dust and junk out of it uh, until you're ready for assembly. All right guys, well that's it for this video. In the next video, we are gonna be installing new cam bearings in this block.